Every year, a thousand of students apply for Google Summer of Code, but only a fraction get selected. Not because they can code faster, not because they're smarter, but because they understand what GSOC actually wants. Hi, I'm Nishata and you're watching Geeks for Geeks, your one-stop solution for all coding-related problems. And if GSOC 2026 is your goal, this video will give you a complete roadmap which will show you how preparation really works. Step by step, no shortcut. Before you open GitHub or look for GSOC roadmap, pause. GSOC is not an exam. GSOC is not about competitive programming and it's also not about how many languages you know. GSOC is about one thing. Can you function like an open source developer? Google doesn't select students. Organizations select contributors that they already trust. Once this clicks, everything else starts making sense. Now, when we talk about phase two, we're talking about six to eight months before the applications. Most beginners fail here. They'll try web plus ML plus blockchain, five to 10 languages and over 10 tutorials. GSOC rewards depth, no range. So choose one tech stack that you truly enjoy. Python for tooling, ML backend, JavaScript for frontend, full stack, C, CPP for systems, compilers and kernels, and Java, Go or Rest depending on the organization. Your goal at this stage is simple. You should be able to build small projects without handholding. But if you really need to stick to tutorials, that's okay. But don't just move forward yet. This is where most people hesitate. The code bases look scary, issues look confusing. You're afraid of looking dumb. And that fear is normal and completely unavoidable. So you must start small. Pick one or two organizations, clone their repo, run the project locally and read open issues, especially the beginner-friendly ones. Your first PR will probably get changes requested, be rejected, take days for something small. And that's not failure. That's how open source trains you. Now this phase four is about four to five months before the applications. At this stage, something changes. You're no longer trying to open source. You're already a part of a project. Now you must focus on regular contributions, fixing bugs, improving docs, adding tests, discussing solutions before coding, being active in Stack, Discord, and mailing lists. This phase is critical because mentors don't pick resumes, they pick people they recognize. Silent contributors get ignored. Consistent communicators get remembered. By now, you should understand the code base, know the maintainers and have context about the project's problems. Your proposal is not a formality. It's a proof that you understand your problem deeply, can break work into milestones and won't disappear mid-program. A strong proposal flows something like this. What the problem is, what your approach is, what the timeline is and your past contributions. The problem is why it matters. Your approach is how you'll solve it. Your timeline should be realistic and honest and your past contributions are a proof of your work. Overpromising kills more proposals than underpreparing. If you're selected, don't relax yet. Community bonding is where successful GSOC students clarify expectations, align on timelines, ask uncomfortable but necessary questions. Most GSOC failures don't happen due to bad code, they happen due to bad communication. And this phase sets the tone for everything ahead. Now the program feels real. You write production level codes, get strict reviews, miss a deadline or two, learn how professional teams work. GSOC does not expect perfection. It expects regular updates, ownership and transparency. If you do that, you'll not only pass, you'll leave with the confidence no course can give you. Breaking the biggest GSOC myths. Now is the time to clear the noise and the myths around GSOC. The first myth is you need competitive programming. The answer to that is no, you just need a GitHub history. The second myth is only tier one colleges get selected. That is a major myth. The selection is organization driven, not college driven. The third myth is one big project is enough. That's a myth because contributions matter more than projects here. The fourth and the last myth is you can prepare in one month for GSOC. Well, that's a very rare and an extremely painful event. While the stipend that you get with GSOC is pretty nice, GSOC is not just about the stipend. 
it's about becoming reliable if you start early stay consistent communicate clearly and respect the open source culture selection becomes a natural outcome not a miracle and the truth is gsa 2026 is not hard it's honest to her done early do like subscribe and hit the bell icon if you like the video and let us know in the comments if there's any other topic you want us to cover till then i'll see you later